Did you tear your ACL and had ACL reconstruction surgery and you wanna get back to playing basketball? We're gonna go over how to build up your confidence to get back to playing basketball successfully. My name is Dr. Marco Lopez, doctor of physical therapy and certified strength and conditioning specialist and co-founder of The Basketball Doctors. So whenever you have ACL surgery, there's always some fear of getting back to your previous activity level. Can I ever get back to playing basketball? If I do, can I be the same athlete as I was? So we're gonna go over all these little topics and how to set you up for success. So the first thing is you wanna find out how you tore your ACL. Was it contact, non-contact? And the, that's the number one question we ask people right away. And we have these conversations early on with our athletes to set them up given the timelines and everything to set up their successful return to basketball journey. So if it was contact, less hesitancy than going back to sport versus a non-contact. Because contact, what happens is you could be the strongest, you could be the most athletic, the, you know, have the most flexibility, whatever you want to call it. But if someone hits you at the wrong spot at the wrong time, you're unfortunately increased at risk for that ACL tear, MCL tear, meniscus, whatever structure was involved with that twisting, hitting that motion, you could be the strongest, but because it was contact, things happen, that tear happened. Versus non-contact, it's you're driving and then you just stop and then your knee gives out. And those we can reduce the risk of. So if you had the contact injury, what we've seen in the clinic, those people are, when they go back to basketball, less hesitant than the non-contact. Because the non-contact, when they do that, they're more in those positions where they're like, oh, I'm kind of scared because this is a position that I tore my ACL. So that's the first part, finding out what was it contact, non-contact. The second one is finding out what the pressure is from coaches or for yourself. Like, when are you expected to go back to basketball? That's what I tell people like, hey, what are the expectations? What have people told you when you should get back to playing basketball? Because a lot of times people tell them like, hey, my doctor told me nine months or my coach said I should be back in eight months. So normally we sit down and we tell you, okay, let's set some realistic timelines. That way it's gonna help you set you up for success after surgery to get back to basketball. Normally I tell people it's more than nine to 12 months. I tell them, hey, nine to 10, you'll be doing basketball drills throughout the entire rehab process, but you're not gonna go into contact around you know, nine, 10 months. And we wanna get you fully back by 12 months because the longer we wait, the more successful we are and the less risk for re-injury. So that's the first one, finding out this pressure from everyone and then coming all together and forming one good game plan of, hey, we're gonna be at, back at the same around time. We wanna go into sport testing. We wanna make sure that you're physically ready to go back to basketball. A lot of the times people don't even do testing. They're like, hey, you know what? My knee feels good. I it's around nine months, I should go back. But you should be doing some sport testing. Not only sport testing, but also psychological readiness questionnaires. We do these every three months. So we do it at three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. The reason is we wanna mentally see where you're at in your journey. Are you fearful of going back to basketball? Are you fearful of going back to activities? So this questionnaire will ask all these questions and it give you a percentage of how ready are you go back to your sport based on your psychological readiness. If that percentage, let's say at month nine is 70%, but physically we do your sport testing, which involves testing your quad, your hamstrings, your cutting. We get a score of that and it's at 90%. We know physically you're able to go, but psychologically you're not. So we now we need to get the mental aspect to catch up to the physical aspect. We also see it the other way around where we do the psychological readiness and we're at 90%, like, yeah, I'm ready to go back. But we do the physical testing and you're like at 60%. Those people are now at risk for injury as well because they think they're ready. They're mentally like, I'm not scared, but physically they're not ready. So it goes kind of hand in hand. So some people are mentally not ready and that increases your risk because when you're on the court, you're scared to do certain movements and that increases your risk for injury versus the people that are overconfident but physically not ready. So their knee's not ready to be able to handle that and that puts them at risk. So you wanna be in that middle range so we tell people, one, you wanna make sure you're physically ready to go back to basketball through all the testing and mentally through the psychological readiness. That way we're equally at every three months, we're like, okay, this is where you're supposed to be at. We're at six months, this is where you're supposed to be at. They're all matched up and they get matched up as you go back to playing basketball. But the main thing that, and this is where our specialty comes in, is more that graded exposure to basketball. To set you up for success, we wanna start in, 
incorporating some kind of basketball movement starting at even week two following surgery. A lot of times I have people bouncing on one leg, passing the ball, bouncing on one leg, dribbling early on after surgery, or whenever they're doing a lunge, dribbling. I wanna incorporate the basketball as part of their movements of rehab. The reason why I do that is because one, helps them build confidence and helps them get that passion back. Like, hey, I could get back to basketball and it helps them motivate them too. And then as I'm getting into more of those six, seven, eight months where I'm going into more cutting or doing more dynamic movements, I add a basketball in. If I'm doing some deceleration drills, I'm having them jog with the basketball, then stop and then jog back. Or I'm having them do a little cutting drill, I'll do the cutting drill without the basketball, then add a basketball in. And then when we were talking about going back into the court, we do a lot of the on the court physical therapy as well, where we have them go through controlled, closed environment movements, like, hey, do a jab step, dribble, pull up, jab step, dribble, crossover. So we make sure that you're set up for success. That way, when you go onto the court, when you're playing one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two or five-on-five, -five, you've done all those moves in rehab, so nothing on the court surprises you because your knee was ready for all those movements. And when it comes to those return to full court progressions, we like to do one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three on three, four on four, all half court, then we progress to full court. And we wanna make sure throughout those closed games that one, we don't have any swelling, two, any time that you feel like, hey, you know what, when I was trying to do this move, I didn't feel so confident, okay, so we'll go into physical therapy and focus on those moves. You know, give you ways to optimize that move or train those moves, that way when you go back, that feels less, un you don't feel as uneasy as before and feel more confident and sets you up for success there. So to give you guys a recap guys, whenever you have the ACL surgery, one, you gotta first find a good therapist, good you know, staff around you, and then come together with your coaches, your family, and come up with a timeline. Because we wanna make sure this timeline, okay, let's realistically say, hey, we're not gonna go back to sport until like the 10 or 12 months. If we go back, you know, at 11 months, that's okay. Or, you know, 10 months, that's even better, you know, if you're ready for it. But we wanna make sure you give you the guidelines, hey, you're not gonna go back till at least those 10 to 12 months. And then the other thing is making sure you're having, you know, that goes with the right staff, is having the testing done, physically and psychologically. That way you know psychologically where you at during your rehab and then physically where you're at in your rehab. And it also is gonna help you motivate, hey, I was at 70% psychological and 60% physical. Now, two months later, I'm at 80%, 80%. So it's a good way, and this is all these little steps that are gonna help you set up for a successful return to basketball. And then we have the graded exposure for basketball, making sure we do all of our skills, drills, early on in these closed environments, then we open it up to chaotic environments. We play one-on-one, -on -one, we react, and that way we're ready and have a successful basketball career after your ACL surgery. Hopefully you learned a lot about this video about setting up for success after ACL surgery to return to playing basketball. If you guys have any questions, comment below, send us a message, happy to help. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, we work with people in person and also online. We are the Basketball Doctors. Let's ball for life.